Hello there, everybody, and today we're doing part two of the City Lights Pocket Poets Anthology, 60th Anniversary Edition, edited by Lawrence Ferlinghetti. There was one thing that I forgot to say on the last video of this um, when I was talking about Ginsburg. Now, I really dislike it when... Um, people do this and even um uh doug blazik and probably my favorite um book of poetry by anyone um skull juices does this and if you remember my skull juices video um i talk about it when he did it it was a little different because he was using um if i recall he was using the same metaphor in different poems in the same book, and I thought that was lazy. Um, but in here, um, and this is back in Kaddish, in one poem, Ginsburg um, says farewell with a long black shoe. And then in the next poem, um, he says, and a long black heavy shoe from your bony left leg. I'm not going to make a huge bitch about this because he's obviously, well, one's to his aunt and once and one is for his mother, it sounds like. So maybe it is him using the same thing to describe two different people. But um, if you are a writer um, and you know that certain parts of your work are going in, uh, to one publication. Make sure that you don't have um, shit like that. That's kind of, it's one of those things. It makes it seem kind of lazy. Okay. Um, and this, no, well, not there. Where does this one start? Does it start with Bob Kaufman? Yes. Okay, now, the next 20 um, books we have in here, or excerpts from books in here, um, is Bob Kaufman's Golden Sardine. Now, this one, first off, it's hard to read. It's all in caps. I don't like that. Um, it's like he's fucking screaming at me the whole time, and what he's saying isn't that important, it seems like. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of annoying. Um, so the first poem I just kind of wrote off. The second one wasn't awful, um, but as it kept going, Heavy Water Blues, as it was continuing, I was getting less and less interested in it. So, um... And it's weird because I've heard a lot of Bob Kaufman. Like, um, it, it's like if you like a certain type of poetry, let's say, like, and it's so funny because it has nothing to do with poetry, but because I'm a fan of William S. Burroughs, like, poetry people will always, like, throw beats at me. Like, oh, you, you'd like this guy, you'd like this guy, you'd like this guy, you'd like this guy. And um, nine times out of ten, I don't. Um, but he, he was one of those names that got thrown at me uh, because I like Burroughs. And um, it wasn't amazing. <clears throat> now, um, Janine Palmy Vega, I think is how you pronounce that. Um, and that book is Poems to Fernando. These aren't awful but they just kind of fall flat for me um but i like how they're written i like the the form of them even though this one's kind of chunky um it's still like it still paces well um but in looking through it i'm like i there's not a line in here that um like just screams at me and shakes me. So it was it was just okay. Um, Ginsburg. Um, this form of life needs sex. 
And this is uh, from what book? Planet News. These are fucking good. Dude, like, I swear to God, I feel like... I'm trying to think of a good example here. It's almost like... Um, like, here, this is a horrible example, but when Titanic came out, yes, a million years ago, when Titanic came out, everyone I knew and their mom and their grandma had gone and seen this movie. And I'm like, nope, nope, not going to do it. I am not falling into line with you ridiculous people going to see a three-hour movie in a movie theater. Fuck that, fuck that, I'm not going to do it. And I threw, like... I didn't throw a fit, but I was just like, yeah, I'm not going to do that. And then because the movie played in theaters for like a fucking year, um, I finally got talked into it. And then when I went, um, it's a very well-made movie. It's not like groundbreaking. I mean, actually at the time, I think there was some stuff in it that was kind of groundbreaking, especially the submarine shit, but... Um, there, it, it was just, it, it was good. And like, I mean, shit, when the ship hits the iceberg, spoiler, um, everything after that, I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. Look at all this shit. And I was totally on board with all that crap. Um, but it's just one of those things where it's like, I fought it for so long. Finally went to go do whatever the fuck it was I had to do to see it. And um, it wasn't that bad. And that's what I feel like about Ginsburg. Like, I fought Ginsburg so hard because everyone tooted his fucking horn. I, I, I'm just, I'm blown away and almost mad at myself for kind of pushing it off as long as I have. Anyway, so the collect the poems from that collection is called Planet News. Um, or the collection, that's what it's called. And that's another one I think I'm going to pick up. Um, I enjoyed it. So the next one, Panic Grass by Charles Upton. Was not a fan of. It just went on and on and on and on. Okay, and then we have Pablo Picasso. And the poems from him here are um, out of a book called Hunk of Skin. And these poems are extremely mundane, but I feel like it's honest. And in its honesty, I could derive a closeness, um, if you understand what I'm saying, with the writer. So I would definitely read more but it's not like these jumped out at me. It was just, like, honest. They're more like, um, these are the things that happened, and this is how... Um, and, it, and it's not a thing where, and this is how I felt. It's these are the things that happened, and these are what those things look like, and these are how dirty those things were. To let you know like what the emotion and what the feeling is in that, if you understand what I'm saying. So with that said, I think they were very well done. Um, Robert Bly is the next one here. And this is um, The Teeth Mother Naked at Last. This, I think if you are into like history of war, his military history, things like that. I think these poems would probably work for you. If you're not into that, this is going to be like one of the most excruciating things to go through. I don't understand, especially in poetry, why some people feel the need to take as long as they can to get to a point. And the point that he makes in this, we know from the first line. So now he's just stalling like i don't, I don't know huh, get it he's stalling because it's um a military-esque poem never mind okay so then we have deanne de prima and this i was very much looking forward to as well and these are from revolutionary letters etc um 
the first poem here, April Fool, April Fool birthday poem for Grandpa, um, didn't really jump out at me at all. Um, but the revolutionary letter number one, I did really enjoy this one quite a bit. So this, um, I think if I had like these books and I'm like, I'm going to pick up all these books, there are ones that I'm going to pick up because I want to read them right away. And then there's a maybe pile. And then there's a, if I get around to it, I might pick it up pile. And then there's a, I'm not going to do that pile. This is a, probably a maybe pile. Okay, so the second pile. Like, I would take a look at that. Okay, here we go again. Now we have Jack Kerouac. Um, Jack Kerouac. And um, I give him a lot of shit. And this is from Scattered Poems. And... <clears throat> I think in the vacuum of time where this happened makes a lot more sense to me as to why people praise him as much as they did. Because if you look through this book and this book is his peers, he's pretty fucking good. Okay. And maybe the God guilt, um, I don't know what his like ethnic background is, but I'm assuming um, East Coast, mid 50s, there's probably some really heavy religious guilt in his life. Um, and these poems here, there's three of them. And um, two of them, they just kind of hang so hard on religion and God that um, I just, I can't, I can't get into it like that. But um, his poem that is entitled Poem um, actually was pretty good. I enjoyed that. Um, so, yeah. And then we have Andre Vosnesensky. Um, dog lips and this um, I didn't like really it's kind of like a poem about him reading in front of I believe an American audience and I think he's Russian or something like that um, and there's a language barrier but the people understood his poetry and then he does some name dropping and I'm just like uh, um but I also like the comparing people to animals that are there, like is um, how he sees the crowd that I really dug. Um, but yeah, so th this is an, I don't know, but um, yeah, I really, and I especially like how this poem ends. I like that a lot. Okay, and now we have more fucking Ginsburg. Okay, and in this, it's the Fall of America poems of the states. These were fucking good. Okay, but I will let you know that um, the honeymoon is pretty much over at this point. Um, so I'll just keep going here. Um, Pete Winslow. Um. Let's see here. Oh, wait, no, that's still Guinea. Uh, Pete Winslow. Uh, yeah. Um, this didn't knock me out. It seems like it's put together well, but, like, yeah. Not much there for me. Um, Harold Norse is next. Um, out of Hotel Nirvana. And um, two of these, I think, are in the collection right there um, that I already read. I should probably be doing a review on that. Um, but there was one poem in here 
that I really, really dug. Which one was it? Was it this one? I would not recommend love. Yeah. Um, that one's pretty good. Um, but there's a poem that's out of this collection that's in that book that's not in this book. And the one in there is really fucking good. And when I do the review on that, I'm going to be doing like a whole little bit about it. Um, so there's that. Now, Ann Waldman from Fast Speaking Woman. This poem... And at the time this came out, this might have been kind of like one of the first times something like this has been done. But it's like, um, like if you look at it, and it's like, I'm a shouting woman, I'm a speech woman, I'm an atmosphere woman, I'm an airtight woman. And then it goes into, um, I'm a know-nothing woman, I'm a know-it-all woman. So it's like um, contradictions on top of each other. And um, I am this, I am that, um, I am this. And at the time that this came out, this might have been like a new fucking cool thing. But this whole like I am this kind of woman is so fucking cliche. And um, I'm not trying to sound like a misogynist for saying that. And like if it was I'm a man, it would be the same fucking thing. But um that type of I am poem that just keeps going and going and going and purposefully contradicts everything that it says in it. Um, I just like when this poem was written, it might've been very refreshing now because so many people have done that and done it to death and done it badly. That whole bit um, just doesn't sit well with me. Um, Jack Hirschman. Now, here is something interesting about this Jack Hirschman, which are the uh, Lyra poll. These poems, I don't think are amazing, but there are some really good lines um, in here that I really, that I really dug. And, um, that I even kind of connected with the whole, um, observation aspect of some of these. I really like a lot. Um, this might be one that I pick up actually like the poems weren't, they weren't jumping out, but the lines were good. Um, I really dug some of the lines and I know this poem, or this poem, this video is probably getting long like the last one was, so I'm trying to kind of step on the gas here. Now we have another Ginsburg joint, um, and this is from Mind Breaths, and um, these are not as good as the previous ones, um, but they're okay, okay? So Mind Breaths is just okay. We'll come back to him. And then we have Stefan Brecht from, what is his book called? Oh, just poems. He seems to be a straight shooter in these poems. And that I appreciate. I think what I'm going to do with this guy is I'm going to kind of search out some of his stuff and see if I could find any other of his um, poems online and just kind of go through them. And if I could find more meat and potatoes to what I'm looking for, um, I might pick up this book. Um, then we have Clean Asshole Poems and Smiling Vegetable Songs. Now, right off the bat, I like that title, and this is by Peter Orlovsky. We have a snail poem, and I'm just like, okay. Poems from Subway to Work. This was actually pretty fun, and I dug that one quite a bit. And then we have a collaboration with him and Allen Ginsberg in a letter to Charlie Chaplin. Um, I don't understand. I don't get it. I don't get it. Um, and then there's someone named Antler. I don't know anything about Antler, but it's from the book Factory. 
And this is some of the, just like the working stiff um, slave way to fucking not have anything to show for it. If you're into that kind of shit, this is good. Like, if you're into that. Like, if everything I read by this guy is like that, then it's not going to be good. But if it just happens that these two poems in here, that's what they're like. Um, well, I'm assuming factory, the whole thing's going to be like that. So that whole book will probably be like that. But after you get out of that book and read other stuff, if it's still just like that, that's going to be kind of bad. But I think this book um, could be kind of cool to look at. So that's one that's getting picked up. Now, do you remember when I said um, Philip Lamantia? Um, I wasn't into the poems from in there, but in the first bit on here, he was really good. Um, in this collection here called Becoming Visible, um, I did not feel that way. I felt back to that way. So um, Lamantia is fucking hit or miss. Um, and I just did not dig these. And then finally, number 40 here. We have Platonian Ode by Ginsburg. And I did not like this. It just goes on and on. Shocker. And it doesn't... I don't think it fucking says anything. I think it just goes and goes and goes and nothing, nothing's there. Nothing happens. So, um, and fuck, that might just be me. But so what I will say, the first 20, I liked a lot more than I liked in the next 20. And if this is a progression, then the following 20, the final 20, I'm not going to like it all. So, um, I'm really hoping guys that that's not true. And that um, I could find some love um, in the rest of these. So um, I'm going to go look at some prices on some of these right now. Because um, I was just doing little searches on my phone. And I realized that a lot of these books I can't find anywhere. So um, this whole thing I'm doing might be for naught. So I'm kind of bummed out about that. So I'm going to look for those. Um Get ready for Hankathon next week. That's still a thing. Um, go over to my Patreon. Um, go to IHateMattWall.com to read my stuff and find out where you can get my stuff. And, um, yeah. And I guess I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.